an hour at best. And I liked it enough, and I went, mm, okay. You know, I was, I was, I play. This is play time. We all need to play. I'm not trying to paint things that are going to be perfect for going to an art show. If I get one out of 10 of these that I like, I'm happy. So I keep can believe I have a big stack of these unfinished ones sitting around. And then someday I look at it and go, I know just what I'm gonna do. Mm -hmm. So I this penny here. I added the face way after. So the painting was here, but this area was blank. And I didn't have any idea how to finish it. I loved all this calligraphy. I think I put it on with a branch from my garden, mm -hmm. dipped it in the paint, and squiggled it on there. I loved that, but I was practicing some of my uh, drawings in my sketchbook, and I had this really nice sketch I liked. And so I put her in there. And so I have a little series of these going now with these simply drawn faces. So all of my history comes out, because I did portrait commissions, and I did a lot of figure drawing way back in Connecticut in the 80s and 90s. All of my history as an artist is coming out now in my abstracts. So when I was in Arkansas, the last 20 years, I did a lot of plein air landscapes. Well, this is an abstracted version of a landscape. So abstracts can have a lot more going on than, and this was, again, there's many layers. There's other failed paintings. This might have looked like this. <laughs> Honest, this might play with it at least three times. This is even more, but I really like it where it is, but it's kind of dark, so I don't know quite whether I'm going to take this one. Do you put the gloss medium after each coat? In between each day's work. Okay. So I could have, if I have 10 layers, then I'm going to have 10. And this one, this has a very floral vibe to it. So you can take them toward floral, too. You can get like a background almost of texture and then say, oh, I like this. Let's take this to a floral. But now here's what I paint with, because I don't use brushes. Remember, this is called Beyond the Brush. This is what I use to put the paint on. And I cast it. The scrapers in, in places where they sell um, cake decoration stuff, you get them with cake uh, decoration. Yeah. Yeah. 
You know the expensive palettes with the lids that are for keeping your acrylics wet. They have a sponge in there and you put, you buy these. They'll sell you sponges, they'll sell you pads of paper. Okay, first of all, this is parchment paper from the grocery store. Mm -hmm. That works the same, except get my brain working, how I might divide something up, what kind of marks I might make. And then sometimes I do big ones because I have a color idea. Like, ooh, I want to use pink today. What am I going to do with it? What colors will I put with it? So this is just filled up with things like that. If you only have a half hour, this is a great way to get some things going. You can do a color study, do a lot of color studies. As you see, I do quick things. Some of them work. I have actually pulled some out and matted them up there on the table that worked really well. I can try collaging. I can experiment with different things. This is collage. This is, I took some of stuff like this and put it, scanned it in my computer and printed it in color on regular print paper and then used it as a collage element. These are other quick abstract ideas. These are larger versions of the small ones I just showed you. So maybe I'll use one of these. I'll use this one as just kind of a guide for where I'm going to go here. So I've got my crayon and I would look at this. Let's see if I can. I can't let you. You guys are so spread out. I'll, I'll try. So I might just do something like this. I call this activating the canvas. This is so that I'm not facing this blank white canvas with nothing on it. And I can come back in and pull out parts until I get something that resembles my concept. So this is just a concept. I throw this away now, put this away, and I work from this. So this is now what I have to work from. I can paint on top of this. I can twirl it like this constantly. I paint when you need a lot of it. When I'm finishing the painting, I use the tube of titanium white. A better brand of gesso, Jerry's and a few others, have a lot of titanium white paint in them. That's how they get their white color, not from the gesso itself. So I put that out. I'm gonna put out some yellow. This is a yellow medium. It's pretty much just a primary yellow color. Yellow is a weak color. It takes a lot um, to make a dent in something but it will turn green if you breathe on it. <laughs> so be very careful when you go into your yellow paint that you have clean hands, clean brushes, clean water. And then the red I'm gonna use, who were you? You're kind of, I think it's a warm red. I've got um, naphtha red light. So I basically use a three color palette and it's usually a red, yellow, and a blue. Simple, simple, simple. I can mix everything from this. I don't need more until I get toward the end. Then I might be searching in my bag for that special green or special orange or something or an aqua, some color that's... So what the name of the blue? Is it ultramarine blue? I, I am using a, a purple right now because I didn't bring my ultramarine blue for some reason. This kit doesn't have it. I, would, I could use a phthalo blue and mix a little of the purple in there to warm it up, so that'll work too. But yeah, I would have used an ultramarine blue and the yellow with this blue. yellow and red. What's what, what the name of the yellow? It's something I can't pronounce. <laughs> <laughs> they do that in these acrylic paints. Oh, I know each one with a long, long yeah. name. Yeah. 
Benzita yeah, I know, I know, I know, Solo. I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> okay, so I can now, from here, I can take it more toward this. So that since this is what I'm working on, I'm going to take this and pull it this direction. Okay. Certainly didn't start there, but it doesn't matter because this is all sealed. So I can just ignore that. I don't like it that much. It's not that gorgeous. The colors are not my colors. It's just, 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 okay. just okay. So, who am I going to start with? I think I'll start with the crayon. I want uh, something in a dark purpley blue. Let's see who you are. That's a turquoise. Here's a Here's a purple. Okay. So again, I'll take this and I'll just look at what I have here and how I want to. I, I'm very attracted to vertical paintings, so I'll just go with that. So I've established the lines. something on my hands to make them clean up faster and easier. It's um, a jerry, I'm um, jerry's. Gloves in the box. There you go. I've used it up there. Burt's Bees. Yeah. Hand sev. It feels like Vaseline, but it smells better. So now I take my tools. I'm going to grab a couple. I've got a credit card down there. cheat sheety here this bottom corner is very light so that's where I'm going to start I'm going to I've got my white I've got this already with white on it so this is what I do guys I don't know if you can see this but I just put this right on I cover up the parts I don't like it mixes with the crayon just fine it makes it a little soft color This way, so I can see what I've got here. What's the point of using the gesso rather than the type painting and white? Just because it's cheaper. Okay. You get that whole big bucket for fifteen dollars instead yeah. of a little tube for twenty-five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, because I do like um, the golden paints, and they are expensive. And I do find that I use a great deal of white. And I will, I will buy one, one a month of both this and this and use it up. But then I teach a lot, so, you know, it's not just my personal work. I'm sharing it with people, too. And then I, if I want to smooth that, I can smooth it with this. I can smooth it with my knockdown knife. I'll come up to you guys. Let happen what happens. <laughs> Don't get too crazy trying to make something happen. Just go with it. Okay. That's looking good. Oh, yeah. I like it. So you let your instinct for how you're designing. I'm designing upside down. So now I've got a little pale purple on here. If I pick up yellow on this, it's going to make it a little bit subdued.
So I'm paying more attention to values than I am to colors at this stage because, I mean, guys, this is the big picture. This is what you see from your 10, 20 foot away is the big picture. It's the big darks and the big lights. You don't see all of the fine lines and all the delicate stuff. So in Nick Wilson's class, he called this the loud conversations. This is what you're telling people when your painting's in the front window of the gallery and they're driving by in your fancy little car, they're gonna only see the big picture. And the big picture has to be strong enough and interesting enough to make them put on the brakes and stop and go into that gallery. Then you can wow them with all the fancy little stuff. That's called the quiet conversation. So first, the big conversation. All of this little stuff in here, that's the quiet conversation. You don't see that from far away. So keep that in mind when you're designing your pieces, whether you're doing, it doesn't matter what you're doing. And uh, just ignore that, they'll go away. <laughs> <laughs> and um, that if you establish your loud conversation early, you will have a stronger painting through the whole thing. If you sneak up on those darks, and we all do that, we all end up with mid-tone paintings. And it's like, if you put the dark in, you go, oh, oh, that's too dark. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But try it. Try to be bold. Try to get that big darks and lights in there early. And if you do some sketching like this, or like the the one with the smaller ones I did, the little thumbnails with a magic marker, it will kind of get your brain around using black. Not that you a little bit, just enough that it's not pure white. And I'm gonna tuck that right in there. So look at how instantly that became a focal point because the light and the dark are together. It's just so fast. This is not as dark as that. This on the edge. Right. As keep your strong things in the middle. As you come out to the edge, they get a little softer. If they their value gets a little bit lighter or darker, the edges aren't quite as sharp as strong. The problem with following photographs is that the photograph has everything <coughs> equally crisp. Yeah. And your eye does not do that. If you are looking at me, <laughs> I'm going to be strong. But my hand over here, don't look at the hand, just look at me. And this hand is in your periphery vision is not outlined in sharp detail. So that's what we accomplish in our painting to show where, where the, the subject matter is, is by keeping it sharper edged and stronger in compliments and that will get attention quickly. So do we have acrylic painters and do I have abstract painters here? Abstract? Abstract? Yes? Cool. And what do the rest of you do? Landscape? Portrait? Everything. Everything? <laughs> I hope this will help even with your portraiture, even with whatever else you're working in. Because the concepts of design are the same, the concepts. Uh, you want to. <laughs> so see, this fancy thing doesn't do anything a whole lot different than a credit card. Or my cake thingy. <laughs> So I'm going to keep my edges softer. I'm going to keep my, my colors a little bit lighter when I come away from here. So this whole upper corner, this, this again is what I'm referencing. Not too perfectly, but but even with these three colors, with all the mixing you can do, you can get so much going.
going on here. You do lose, use more paint here, but at least it doesn't go down the drain into the rinse water. It actually goes on a canvas. <laughs> 